Okay, in this video we're going to go over three functions in Corel Draw, uh, and we're going to use these three shapes that I've got on the screen for all three of them. And um, I think these three are sometimes confused, and they're not they're not really anything alike, but people do confuse them in that the first one is grouping objects, the second one is welding objects, and the third one is combining objects. The welding and combining are maybe a little bit more confused be, um, between the two. A lot of people confuse those more. Um, grouping is really completely separate because it does not destroy any object properties. Grouping just is a convenience thing. So we're going to start out with grouping first. And I've got the three objects here and each one is a separate object. We've got no groups involved. Now if we would group these together it does not change any of the properties of these. It doesn't combine the shapes. It doesn't change the colors or anything. It's a convenience thing. If I do a select here, a marquee select, and I select all three of them, and I have my status bar turned on down here so the object information will show up. And I almost always leave this on when I'm working because it's really handy to be able to click on something and see what we're working with. It says three objects selected and that just means I've selected three objects. Now if I go up here to arrange or I right click here and click on group it now puts those into a group and what that's done is we haven't changed anything we just now those are grouped together where we can't move them accidentally in any one of them we select we select all three and as we move them they all move together if we look at our status bar it's now a group of three objects now if we want to move them independently, ungrouping is completely non-destructive. Once you ungroup it, we're right back to where we started. We have three separate objects. So it's not destructive as in what we'll see with welding. There is no way to unweld. You can undo, but you can't unweld. So that's how grouping works. So we're going to group these back together and the position of them, of course, does not matter if they're overlapping and we group them. Nothing special happens. There's also a button right here you can use to group or as you can see you can do control G. There's just lots of ways depending on whether you like to uh, work the keyboard and mouse with uh, two different hands or you like the right click method to group. Now we've got a group here. So the last thing I want to show you about grouping is you can maneuver these objects independently without ungrouping them and this becomes very handy when you have a group of a thousand objects or something and they're all scattered throughout your design but you want to keep them a group but you need to maneuver one just slightly or actually anywhere you want to put it or even delete it you can do that without ungrouping all these objects so we'll show you how to do that real quick here all we need to do is I'm going to hold down my control key so I'm holding it down and I can click on one of the objects and as you can see it will say it's a child curve on layer one and what it's done is the handles you'll notice are round instead of the normal square handles and that shows that we've selected something that's within a group and since that's the only thing selected I can move it where I want actually I could delete it if I wanted and when I click back off of that and come back up here our group is still intact but you know our group now has a new shape because I've moved one of the elements that make up the group. I could hold down the control key and click on the box here and we could move it unselect and our group is still together. They still move together but we can move one independently by doing that by just holding down the control key, key and clicking on one of them and yeah, I could even delete that and now we just have a group of two objects instead of three objects. We just got rid of one of them but we didn't have to ungroup it doesn't seem important when we just have three objects. If we had dozens and dozens of objects, it would be a lot more important. So I'm going to undo that. I'll get our three shapes back because we're going to move on to the next thing, which is weld. And I'm going to ungroup that, put these kind of back apart, and we'll go on to weld. Now weld basically takes um, two or more objects that you select and makes them into one object but the key is how it makes them into one object. In this case here if we were to weld all three of these designs together it would not change 
our shape in any way because they don't touch. In other words, if they touched, you know, you imagine two objects if, or two pieces of metal, you could weld them together, but if they don't touch, not much is going to happen there. Now the only thing that will happen is when you weld something, since we make it into one object, it's going to take the properties of the last object that we select. So if I select this one, hold down my shift key, select that one, and, and then the third one, when I weld, which is right here, when I weld that, they're all going to become yellow because it will always make this into one object. As you can see down here, curve on layer one. It's not three, three curves or anything like that, three objects. It's just one. I'm going to undo that. And it will always take the property of the last one we picked, which was the yellow. So that's how we know which color it's going to become. So if that's important to you, if you want to make sure I welded these together and it's blue, then you would select the blue and last. So that's how that works. Now if these are touching, then it becomes a completely different ball game. So if I have these welded together here and we'll make we'll say we want it to be blue when we're done, but we want basically these three shapes to be welded together. Oops, it didn't do that right. We'll select the yellow, hold down the shift key, select the red, then the blue, and we'll go up here and click on weld. And as you can see it becomes blue because that's the last color we selected, but more importantly, this all one shape now. Because they touched, anywhere where it overlaps, the overlap is removed and it just becomes all one piece. There's no, there's no overlap to it. So I'm going to undo that back to where we had three separate pieces. So that's how weld works. It makes one object out of several or two or more objects it welds them together. So weld can be really handy when you're putting you know a couple things together and you really basically just need the outline of that shape and you don't care about that detail where they overlap because that, that all gets destroyed and there's no way to unweld something other than control Z which undoes it. There's not a way to like like the group we could ungroup it and it would bring it back to a, um, its original pieces. The weld is completely destructive so if you go far enough down the line that you can't undo it, you're not going to get it back. So keep that in mind. Now the last thing, which is similar and people get confused with weld, is the combine. And combine and weld, or combine and group, are not the same thing. Combine actually merges the objects together, but it does it different than welding. Combine keeps the same shape again but where the objects overlap it will make holes and so I'm going to select all three of these and we'll do a combine which is right here or you could right click combine and again it is under the arrange menu down here to combine so I'll click on that again it keeps the property of the last object that's selected which was the blue one obviously and where the objects overlap it makes holes now to prove those are holes and not just white shapes, we'll just very quickly draw us another box here. We'll make it red. It's on top, so what we need to do is we're just going to go ahead and send this to the back, back of layer. And as we slide this underneath, you can see that those holes there are not just white shapes on top they are actually holes in our blue design. So um, combine actually makes a hole where you have overlap. Doesn't seem very useful what we did just here, and I'm going to take that back off of there. And this actually can be undone here. We can't get our properties back, but the opposite of combine is break apart. When we break those apart, we have our original shapes back. That is not a completely destructive process like weld is, because we can undo it. Now you say, well I don't think that's very useful, but actually it's extremely useful because a lot of the letters in the alphabet are made up of holes. I mean we've got an O has a hole in the middle. It isn't just a white circle over top of a black background, it's actually a hole. So if we lay this circle, which I'll change the color of here, I guess it's in behind there, so let me bring it to the front, or send this circle to the back. 
back of the layer. So now we've got this circle in front of that, and we'll get this one out of the way. When I take these two and combine them together, we now have a hole in this. Let me send that to the back. We have a hole in our square, or actually we have a round hole in the square, which would be used to show possibly something in behind there, maybe even this object here. Put it back there, maybe a little bigger so you can see that it's behind it, send it to the back. Now we're actually seeing through that hole. So combine is how we start creating holes. They don't have to be perfect circles, they don't have to be um, pentagons or hexagons or anything like that. They can be very complex objects and you'll notice when you look at very complex drawings they're just a series of a bunch of holes. But again, after all of this, we can take this, break them apart, and get our original objects back. So that one's a little bit more confusing, but is probably the most important thing that you learn in Corel Draw when you start drawing shapes is you have to learn how to make these holes. And holes is are always made by combining two objects. And it's very important to learn that early on. It will save you a lot of headache. It'll save you when you start breaking things apart and you're like, why did it do that? Where, where did the hole go? Why did, when I broke that apart, a break apart and ungroup are completely different things. So keep that in mind. So hopefully you've learned something here. We've covered grouping, welding, combining, and then of course ungrouping is the opposite of grouping and break apart is the opposite of combining. So keep all that in mind and um, draw some shapes on your screen and play around with it. Get some um, experience with using those different functions and it will help your drawing techniques. So we'll see you in the next video.